Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I install the light bar on my brush guard for the 2023 Kawasaki Mule 4010 Trans 4x4. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. This is just a quick unboxing of all the parts so I can take a look at it. It's already been opened. Here's the light bar. And got there. There's your electrical. Coming in here, you have the remaining electrical with the switch, which is nice. It looks like all the connections are already made. And then this is your hardware. And I can see the directions in here. All right, I'll take everything else apart and start working on it. Okay, a quick look over the directions. Seems that it's pretty straightforward, but I'll comment after it's all said and done. But the main things I wanted to see, like I said earlier, all these connections are made up to the point here where they will connect to the back of the switch. And then here is your 40 amp relay. And what I really wanted to know was how many amps it drew. So I opened this up and it's got a 15 amp fuse in there. And then these two terminals are going to go to your battery. Okay, one negative of this kit is there's no installation instructions for the light bar itself. And so I went through the package that had all the hardware in it, and I think I have it figured out. So I've laid up the bolts and washers and lock washers and everything where it should be. So I'm assuming the two larger hex head bolts are going to attach these two brackets to the brush guard of my UTV and then all those little smaller one quarter by 20 bolts are going to be used to attach the light bar itself to the brackets. Alright now I'm looking on the left side of the interior of the dash and you can see here that's where I ended up mounting the toggle switch and what worked out great about that is if you look real close before you mount this in there, there's an etched out rectangle on the dash itself for you to make a cutout. So what I did was I just went in there with a box cutter and used that to cut out the rectangle and then this switch drops right in. So I ran my wiring down in there, down through here, and then what I did was to keep it hidden, I just disconnected all those pieces there with the screws and then ran the wiring harness underneath those up against the bar underneath and then up through here into the battery section here and this is the fuse that comes with the kit and then this is the relay that I just attached here just drill the hole and attach it and it's nice and tight and the seat shuts no problem and what I will mention is and I don't know if I can get in here and look at it but if you look at those nuts that are on the end of the battery maybe if I keep my finger it'll keep it in focus what they are is they're like reversed T-nuts so there's a flange section that goes into the terminal of the battery which the bolt on the other side screws into so the only way I could get them out was to go ahead and use like a flathead screwdriver and tap them slowly until they were loose enough where I could take them off by fingers so just to give you a heads up where that's at and I connected the positive and negative battery terminals to this and I tested it and everything works fine I'm going to show you where I ran the wiring from the front of the side-by-side -side into the dashboard area. So as you can see here, 
I ran it through the grill into the front storage area. So I'm just going to lift this up. And you can see, like I mentioned before, how that sits on top there of the light bar. But it still gives you plenty of access to this front storage area. So then I ran it up through there. Just drilled it out. It's real thin plastic. Ran the wiring through there. And again, another hole through there in order to drop it down behind the dash. And then I used those stainless steel wire clamps that are insulated with rubber. Now again, this is a view of the inside of the cab looking down at the accelerator pedal and where all the wiring comes through to the center down there. And you can see the bundles that travel through there and there's actually screws that you can take apart and lift that whole section out to get to the wiring. And then you'll see, if you can, it makes its way out back here. Now. I originally tried to run my wiring through there just with a fish tape because I didn't want to take everything apart. It's a brand new machine and I was afraid of goofing something up. So when I couldn't fish any wiring through there, I just went ahead and ran it through here like I explained earlier. And it worked out just fine. This is a view of the final install and you can see that I attached it to the top bar of the brush guard and that worked out really well because it doesn't block any of the radiator surface area although there was one little thing that came up when I opened the front compartment section it does lay on top of the bar but I'll trade that off for making sure that this thing stays cool. All right, this is a close-up view of the light bar mounted on the top tube of the brush guard. And I wanted to mention a couple of things. First off, this was the original stock mount for this light bar and you were supposed to drill a hole wherever you wanted to mount it. And I decided against that, so I ended up buying these clamps right here to attach it to the top tube. And I'll put a link for that in the narrative section. And by doing this, it allowed the bar to be pushed out further away from the front body of the side-by-side, -side, giving me a little bit more space in there to open the front hood. And when you do this, there's this protective grating in here that sits in front of the radiator along behind the brush guard. So in order to make this fit, wherever you decide to mount these, you're going to have to cut a little section of these things out so you can wrap those clamps around it. These things are pretty bright. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.